Hi, this is Rusty Gardner with Florida by Water. I want to take just a couple of minutes and show you how easy it is to use Google Earth and take those locations that you find on Google Earth, put them in your Garmin home port, and then put them to your GPS. By using Garmin home port, you're able to actually do your waypoints, your routes, your tracks, all at home before you get ready to go out on the water. It's a lot easier than using your chart plotter trying to put in this information. And I think you'll find it to be um, pretty easy and pretty exciting and we're going to talk about how we can do this and for more information on great places to go if you go to www.floridabywater.com uh, we also have the GPS coordinates there first of all what we want to do is make sure that Homeport and Google Earth are speaking basically the same language when it comes to GPS coordinates so what we're going to do here is we're going to go over here to um, our section and we're going to get here and go to tools options and there's a lot of different ways through actually three different ways that you can put in gps coordinates we want to make sure we're doing it the same on both so first of all we're going to do um, decimals and degrees right here so we got we're doing the hdd which is heading decimal and degrees and put that in and we'll also choose wgs 84 which is the standard uh, format in which charts are created in for the most part. The others you can put to your preference whether your measurement system, statue, nautical miles, however you want to do it. Your heading I put to true. You can also do some other things right here under the options tab. So decimal degrees is what we're going to choose. We'll go over here to our Google Earth. Google Earth, we want to go to preferences and here we'll see decimal degrees under show lat long that means that the numbers are going to match up when we're moving our stuff over so for the sake of this exercise i live in jacksonville florida a popular place to go is the jacksonville zoo and we're going to go from the jacksonville landing which is downtown jacksonville to the jacksonville zoo in order to do that we're going to create two waypoints and one route and let's look up the jacksonville landing first in google earth okay there's the jacksonville landing We'll zoom into that. Now I am a little familiar with the area because I do live in this area. I do know that there is a huge boat dock right there in front of the landing and that's where I want to go to. And I'm going to go up here and get my place marker and I'm just going to click on that place marker and it's going to open up a window. I'll move that little yellow push pin uh, to the dock right there in front of the landing so I know that's where I'm leaving from. Now notice we have our latitude and our longitude. I'm just going to copy this latitude I'm going to go back over here to my home port window and here we have uh, you'll notice it says new and we have new routes new tracks new waypoints I want to select the waypoint I'm going to highlight that and I'm just going to click anywhere on my map once I have the highlighted thing and you know this because I have an arrow a little box by it, it doesn't matter where I put it. it it really doesn't so down in our bottom left under the properties we notice it says a road we're going to rename this to Jacksonville landing okay we're gonna choose a symbol for it they sell a lot of food and stuff there so that'll probably be fine um, see if we can find an icon that that we think represents kind of what the landing does here's a fork and a knife that'll be great and remember I copy the GPS coordinates notice the formats the same so I'll just highlight that format and I'm gonna paste the, the number right over the top of it I'm going back to Google this window still up I'm going to copy it, then I can actually just close that out. There's no need to keep that open. Now what I want to do is go right here, copy the GPS coordinates. We have the Jacksonville landing, we have the GPS coordinates. Uh, your elevation, depth, proximity, if you had a sounder or something you were pulling in from your boat, a waypoint, maybe that you marked it, will usually fill all this information in. Now notice on our pane right here, and we can adjust these, it says Jacksonville landing. A right click or on a Mac um, control kick click on this we can actually go here and it'll find the thing it'll say show on chart and that's what we want to do we want to show that on the chart there we go so it shows exactly where I put it I'm gonna grab the hand tool at the front so I can kind of move around on my map notice we have all of our um, water depths in, in there now home port costs $29 it doesn't come with preloaded maps However, if you hook it up to your chart plotter or if you 
have purchased maps in the future, then you can use those with this program. But the maps in your chart plotter will show up. So we're going to zoom in just a little bit uh, till we kind of get a little bit closer view, but we still have our detailed information on our water. All right, now the next place we need to find, we're going to go back over here. Remember we said we want to go to the Jacksonville Zoo. So I'm going to type in Jacksonville Zoo and Google Earth. And there we see the zoo. Now I know that there is a boat dock at the zoo. And if you go to the Jacksonville Zoo by boat, believe it or not, it's absolutely free. Here's the zoo in this area, and right here is the boat dock. A lot of times there's picture icons on there that you can look at that people have posted. That can be very helpful at times. Grab our place marker. Let's put it here at the end of the dock. Copy my latitude. Go back over to my home port. Well, first, let me go ahead and get my new waypoint. Remember, it doesn't matter where I put it. Now we have a new one. We'll type J A C K Jacksonville Zoo. Let's find an icon, and I saw a nice little icon. I thought would be perfect for for the zoo. And let's put the panda bear. Perfect. We're going to copy over there. Go back to Google Earth. Get our longitude, back to home port, copy that information there. Now we're perfect. We have two, basically, uh, two waypoints. Now I have to be careful. If I click anywhere on this map, it's going to add another waypoint, which I do not want to do. I can always control click and delete it, but, um, or right click and delete it. But for the sake of what we're doing right now, I'm just going to use the select tool and I want to go over here where I'm going to start at. It's Jacksonville Landing. Go back, show on chart. So there we go. I'm going to use my pan tool, zoom in. Now, when I'm making a chart, I don't use the pan tool that often. However, I will use the arrows on the keyboard, which will also move things around very nicely. Let's zoom out just a little bit. We want to keep the detail on the chart, but see as much of the chart as possible. Okay, we've lost our detail, so we're going to go back up. There we go. That's perfect. We'll get it centered where we kind of like it. So we can see the water depths. We want to stay in channels. We want to stay basically within the channel markers. And we can do all this by creating a route so we can just look at our GPS to make sure that we're actually on course. So now you're going to go where you got your waypoint. There's a drop down arrow right to the right. Choose route. Now, once you chose your route, you're going to see this little pencil. This is your route tool. We're going to highlight on the Jacksonville landing. At this point, it becomes pretty easy. It's just like drawing. So we're going to highlight there. So it's the Jacksonville landing. And I'm just going to add points. And it's going to continue to draw these. Remember, I'm going to use my arrow keys. Um, so I can put in as many straight lines as possible. We want to go through our channel markers. Now this channel goes way over here. Now the channel is going to actually notice how the channel's starting to come up at this point now. relatively easy we're just drawing it out we notice we're staying in the white which means on our charts this is deep water this is exactly what we want staying within the channel markers and we can go back and fine-tune any of these particular channel markers we need to um, as we get a little bit closer to where we're going now, I know we're getting close Zoom out a little bit and actually see where we are. And there's the Jacksonville Zoo over there. So we're going to actually want to turn right here. This will be the part where we actually want to see. We're going to continue on up in here. And this is where it gets a little more tricky because we don't have white water. So we're going to 
kind of look at the water depths. And if we go here, we're going to kind of hit our four feet and our five feet until we get to the Jacksonville Zoo, and we're just going to click right on this guy. And now we match escape, and that takes us out of the chart, chart tool at that point. Now, at this point, we we'll want to go back and get our select tool. Now, you notice we have some things up here now. We have an insert if we need to insert a track, move a point, and I'll show you how to do that in just a second. But look, we have our track, or our, I'm sorry, not our track, but we have a route. And on our route, it's going to actually give us the information that we need. We can go down here and look. Now I've also set up a boat profile for mine so I can look at the properties. Um, I can actually look at the trip view, the time for each leg, how much gas I'm going to use. This has also got to be set up with our boat profile. I can show you how to do that real. We don't have water depths per se because we weren't measuring with our sounder at the time. But if I wanted to look at this completely, so see we're starting at right here at uh, Jacksonville Landing. We're ending at the Jacksonville Zoo and here total time we're talking about 18 minutes. It's going to be 8.9 miles. It's great information. So these are some things we need to know. If we wanted to move a chart and just clean it up and I always like to do this. I'll take my hand tool. I'll kind of go back. Sometimes I'll gl blow it up a little closer if I need more detail. I'm just trying to check. Um, make sure my route is perfectly done that I've stayed within the guidelines I wanted to and wow it looks great uh, this is kind of cool if you take the Jacksonville right the route and we can hit playback notice it's actually gonna do a little animation that will allow me to follow the route exactly and as I switch through it, you can see how it moves basically upon my course. So that's it. I mean, I've got two waypoints. I got a route. Uh, at this point, the only thing that I would want to do is take and send it to my chart plotter. And there's a couple of different ways to do that. But we can export it. Now, I don't have a chart plotter hooked up so it doesn't show. But we'll just go up there and we can see that we could export it uh, to our chart plotter. We can also, the easiest way to do is send to and we could send it if our chart plotter was shown up it would show up actually on that list and it will load those over if you have an sd card it'll put them on the sd card you go to your chart plotter your 440 or whatever you're using uh, manage maps and you can replace it add it however you'd like to do it very simple very easy to use always when you get through doing this kind of stuff you all want to go through and um, make sure that you saved your information you also want to make sure that you have uh, checked it and this is for reference always look to your conditions keep your eyes open if you're unsure of the area sure about water depth and you don't have the information you need ask local people follow another boat there's a lot of things you can do hey this will get you started it's a lot of fun to play with you can set it home while you're not in the boat and plan out your boating adventure so you'll have a great time